uh, we used to have like house gates. I will just like, you know, the the, the gate handles, I'll just <laughs> oh, keep spamming, spamming, spamming. <laughs> the, 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 I broke like three to four gates, the, oh you know, the, God, the handles bro. in like a year. So. Not only were you active, you had the strength. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me some. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Sheng Jun and I'm currently a national swimmer for Singapore. So today I'll be speaking with an aspiring marathoner in hopes to inspire her to pursue a career in marathon as well. Hi, my name is Era. I'm 19 this year. I'm currently in NAFA studying fashion merchandising and marketing. In the future, I want to be a pro runner athlete. How I got into track and field was um, at the end of 2016 when I was in second three. At that time, I was going through a certain phase in life, like for example, bullying, I was going through um, mental illness also. It was something that I could convert my energy and actually find some peace and improve my lifestyle from there. From then on, I wanted to decide that I want to go pro with running, like marathon running. Uh, I would say the first one would be parents' disapproval. That's for sure. The other one is the fact that I had to consider my career options because I'm also very career orientated and I wasn't sure that this kind of line of work would actually secure me a stable job in the future. I would say unrealistically, I expected my journey to be really smooth sailing. You know, getting into running and then having my parents' approval, me actually really going into like the marathon life and having things put together, like everything falling into place. But I realised that that's more of a unrealistic expectation. So would being able to talk to a professional help you in your journey? Ah, definitely. So why don't you move the divider behind you? The one behind me? Alright. Interesting. Oh! <laughs> hi, Era. Hi! Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, hi, uh, Era. Hi. I'm Sheng Jin and I'm currently a national swimmer for Singapore. So you do both fashion and marathon at the same time, currently? Uh, yes. My very first one was actually last year, which mm. was the standard charter 5km one. Because uh, if it wasn't for COVID-19, I would yeah. actually be in the standard charter 10km run. Oh, but because of pandemic, because of pandemic, <laughs> yeah, pandemic yeah, yeah. sister had to put it on hold. Oh, yeah. Are they going to have like a 10km this year or they are totally going to call it off? I would actually want to go back to 10km. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like I, I realised that with school stress mm -hmm. and then with like other concerning factors in my life, like running is really the only way to really channel my stress mm -hmm. and also remind me like why I'm still surviving, why I'm still thriving in mm -hmm. life. If you love like marathon, you should just go for it and don't ever give up. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. So I think um, your story was very touching just now. You shared about your bullying case oh, in, back in so secondary much. school. Um, for me, I was a late bloomer myself. When my classmates already grew tall, I was still like one of the shortest <laughs> in school. So. I do have experiences of like bullying as well and I can relate to that in a way. Sports has given me a way to channel my energy in a positive way as well. We have like, you know, school nationals and stuff. I usually will get like 7th to 8th place, like barely making it to the final in the school nationals and then like I mean, people... I so... Oh yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, I mean people say, oh why are you still swimming? Like, you know, why don't you just go and study? Like, what's the point? So I'm like... I got 8th place this year, so next year maybe I'll aim for 6th and then slowly move to like 4th and then slowly maybe aim for a medal. For me, setting small goals and not comparing myself to others has really helped me. Just now I heard you talking, right? You mentioned that your parents aren't very supportive of sport. Why is that so, if I may ask? Uh, yeah. Because of my injuries and mm -hmm. so they think that um, with my injury, I could you know hurt myself further, which I... Mm. I don't blame them. It's mm -hmm. a possible factor. Mm -hmm. And the second is because my parents are pretty, I would say, a typical Asian. <laughs> so it's like, they want you to have a stable career. Yeah, like, for yeah. example, a lawyer, a doctor. Mm -hmm. Like, me in this branch of arts, like the mm -hmm. fashion industry, is mm -hmm. not something that they were very ideal of either way. Similar, like, because, you know, Asian parents, they care for you a lot. But my parents knew that I love swimming a lot. So they never ever stopped me from swimming. My dad would fetch me to, to training every day. Like as swimmers, we train two times a day. Then he would fetch me there and he would watch me train. 
So that was something that was like, that's how we bonded a lot. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, and then when I went home, every time my mom would prepare me breakfast or dinner, like because she she knew that I was tired. Mm. Last time I really loved swimming so much until some days my mom didn't allow me to go for swimming, oh. right? Because she wants me to stay home to study. So then uh, we used to have like house gates. I will just like, you know, the the, the gate handles are just <laughs> oh, yeah, spamming, spamming, spamming. The, 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 I broke like, Three to four gates, the oh you know the, God, the handles bro. in like a year. So. Not only were you active, you had the strength. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give me some. <laughs> I think my swimming career has been a marathon in that sense. Like, yeah, I just kind of took one step at a time. Like you know, um, I was from ACS uh, junior for my primary school, oh, and wow. then I went to sports school, mm -hmm. and then uh, from there I just established my swimming career. As much as we can plan for like, oh, what's gonna happen in a few years time just do what you love and things will just fall into place for you so i think um, if you ask me looking back now i have no regrets even though it wasn't a path that was what a conventional like like mm. a singaporean yeah. uh, son or daughter would do but um, i think my parents are very supportive and i really mm. thank them for that yeah your parents just really love and care for you a lot lah, yeah. which is why they, they don't want you to get injured again. Yeah. What's the next step now that if you are not sure if the 10 km is going to go on or not, are you still going to train for marathon or? I mean, definitely I have to train because training for marathon isn't just a marathon. It's also more of a lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. So like, I don't see it as just something that at a certain age, I'll just stop because I don't really like to rely on my parents on money to pay for my school fees or anything. I was actually considering it like build my own capital, build my own finances mm -hmm. and then like support myself with the schools, the training and the equipment all by myself. I mean, it's a longer route, but it's worth the shot transitioning to a full-time career. Yeah. I think everyone starts from somewhere and I really respect the mindset that you have. Uh, it's your end goal going to be the, the 42.1? Is it? Yes, that's oh, what I'm trying. Oh, okay. I'm actually trying for that. Really but it's idea. a long, long process. <laughs> As long as you know you're doing yourself yeah. good and looking for self-improvement, I think that's mm. the most important thing. Sooner or later, like what I said, right, sports would you have to leave sports behind. Yeah. I mean, it will always be a part of us, but our bodies might not be able to take it in the future. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I wanted to have a smooth transition so that I don't fall into depression, you know, the phase mm. whereby I don't know who I am anymore. Mm. So I think that's the scary part. So I'm actually yeah, doing both work and swimming at the same time and mm. it's it's been going well so far. Yeah, so Era, um, I just want to thank you today for sharing with me about your marathon journey. And I think it's really inspiring. For anyone tuning in today, um, I would like to say that if you as well want to pursue a career in sports, don't give up and just go for it. When you go through obstacles along the way, always remember that you're doing what you love. Even if you don't succeed, at least you know that you gave it your all. And I think, yeah, you should be proud of yourself for that. <laughs>